Welcome old listeners and new listeners to Boom Bapped, capital E-D. This is your co-host with the most, Brandon Bushido Garvey White. What's happening, Rochester? This is Atlas with the blend. How you feel? Yes, yes. And we got brother Rob Lowe on the tech. And in case you didn't know, we're about to interview an MC, Beat Smith, super OG veteran when it comes to this music. <laughs> brother Coach Parcells, a.k.a. Build Parcells. What's going on, big bro? Yeah. Hey, nothing much, man. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you. First, first thing I want to say, though, know, man, and, you know, this is part of the reason why I reached out to you. Like, we put in a lot of work in building that uh, Rochester music scene. I know I did personally, and you know, I used to do shows, and I remember you used to be around, and then one day you came up to me, he's like, "Yo, uh, you think I can get on the rock the mic?" <laughs> I was yes, like, yes. "You know what?" Go for it. I don't know if you remember that, but you know, I always kept an eye on you. I, I always liked how you moved. I liked the message that you brought in the platform. So fast forward, you did an interview with Treyism, another brother of mine, yes, well yes. cultivate that scene. It's a positive interview, and it's in the vein of you. Like I just like what you're doing. So I want to salute you and what you got going on right now. I wanted to be a part of it. Man, as much as that salute is appreciated, it is definitely not necessary, homie. Um, actually, I met Trey <laughs> through you. I remember um, I met Trey and Chris G through you. And um, I remember, I don't remember rocking the, the rock and the mic, but I do remember the um, the fact that at a time where I was trying to, you know, uh, establish myself and trying to get things rolling at the Dublin, you were one of the first older dudes, you know what I'm saying, that had been yeah. doing it and it's established that had recognized and said like yo I like how you move and I respect the fact that you're doing it by yourself I remember those words come out your mouth from the rip so it's definitely a big uh, huge honor to have you on here man for sure um, for those who are new to Boom Bap Boom Bap is an honest open and clear headed exploration of education and cultural issues focused on but not limited to the Rochester area through a hip hop lens so you just kind of ran down your deep roots when it comes to building up uh, musically, particularly in our in our city, right? But if you could just you know break down a little bit, uh, give a little quick resume, like a little one minute resume of who you are, you know what you what you've done uh, musically or outside of music, and what what makes you tick. Oh man, it's a long story, but I'm gonna have to condense it. It's the clip note version. Yeah. Basically, me and my brother destroy. Uh, we started. Yes. Like a group called Build and Destroy, uh, back mm-hmm. in probably like 2001. Uh, we made moves promoting ourselves with the conscious vibe, with the street edge. Mm-hmm. Nobody really was doing it back then. That's so and that's what we were doing, you know. Wherever uh, there was a show, we made our way through. And like you said, like I noticed with you, and I read your uh, blog too, that was pretty dope. Mm-hmm. When you uh, not like everybody else, you know, people leave you alone. But yeah. I ain't sweating. You know, like, okay, you don't want to book me for your party? I tell my own party. You know, mm-hmm. and that's where the Dublin thing came in. A lot of them Dublin shows, us, uh, Act Live James, who's working for Duck Down right now. Mm-hmm. Um, we helped cultivate that whole scene and people who wasn't actually doing a popular type of hip-hop that's right, could yeah. come in and be themselves, sell their merch, and, you know, have fun. We really had no fight. Like, it was just a good time for hip-hop. It was that, that was a good era, and I had my foot in that. Uh, the Chris G thing, we started the W585 podcast. Uh, that was probably about 2010. We got Chris G back on the air. That's why he's doing what he's doing. Well, I ain't going to say that. But, mm-hmm. you know, we helped segue him to get him back on the airwaves, you know? Indeed. W585 radio, because there was no radio station that was playing what we was doing. So we made our own radio station. Trait isn't the same thing, you know. If you had something, you had a message, and you were focused, they shoot a video for you. I think y'all just did a video recently too. Yep. That's how we kept our side of the coin going as far as what we were doing. It's uh, conscious hip hop, uh, and I don't even want to just box in the conscious hip hop. Just not pop, you right. know. Indeed, indeed. Well, that's what I've been doing, man. Mm. Well, that's what I was doing. Coach Parcells. 
everything else you can Google me, man. I got over 13 <laughs> albums, son. I produced for you a lot of first albums. Your favorite artist out of Rochester. Everybody that's popping out came through my dojo one way or another, or, you know, I built with them. Because for me, it wasn't about being the king to be the king. It was about making sure Rochester was on top of everything. So I made sure I reached out to anybody that was focused. And anybody that's out there who know my name, they'll tell you, coach good people, and he helped put me where I was at. That's one way or another. Yo, Coach P, what up, man? This is Atlas. How are you? Peace, brother. Peace. All right. I don't know if you and I ever actually met, man, but I knew your brother back in the day. You know what I mean? Destroy. Oh, uh, Destroy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And your then, name do sound familiar. Yeah. I, I went by a couple of different things. I was probably left field back then, but uh, but yeah, man. Okay. Good, to, good to make these connections, That's though. Tough, man. Oh, appreciate it. Sure, man. Sure. But yo, man, so look, <laughs> I got a two two uh two point question for you real quick, man. As uh okay. as the conclusion of this little icebreaker exercise. Identify for us one book you've read that you have liked. A book that you did. Um yeah. it's a good question because you know, people don't be reading books, they watch YouTube tutorials, but uh <laughs> for actually sure. uh the last like one that I can really, you know, floss on people would be the uh, uh, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema mm-hmm. that came before Columbus. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I, I found it in the library <laughs> in a confiscated great read. Uh, <laughs> Been there. I, I, my, my name is Bill Parcells, like I built. You know, I'm, I'm about all of that. I'm into history. And the, the, uh, the fact that he was from that area and was able to substantiate why he was from that area with that mm-hmm. huge, beautiful thing. Beautiful. All right. Great read. Part two of that now is um, name an album that you would throw on as the soundtrack to that book. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have to go dig back, you know. No offense to what's going on now. Things change, but only thing I think that would, would be that heavy would be uh, DDP uh, Edutainment. Yeah. That you must oh. learn it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite albums, man, in the world right there. I'm not mad at that at all. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you must learn changed my life, man. You know, that verse, uh, the day begins. Yo, yo, that verse right there where he said Genesis chapter 11, verse 10, explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. <laughs> if you repeat that mm-hmm. fact, you can't laugh at you. Mm-hmm. I was going to private school at that time. Yo, hold I up, went to hold school up, hold and bombed the nuns with that. <laughs> yo, <laughs> coach, believe it or not, that's one of the questions. Because I remember us having that conversation a few years back. Um, we're going to talk about that in a second. Word up. That's crazy. That, that, that recall is there already. Word up, man. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. It's real. So actually, oh. let, yeah, we can just talk about that now then, right? Like, so that's in that joint you must learn, right? Um, he runs down the genealogy as, as, as uh, you know, chronicled in Genesis, right? In terms of the ultimate, like, black gene that exists. Um, with, within the, the Hebrew blood, bloodline and the Semitic bloodline, mm-hmm. right? Um, yes, sir. And you talked about your, you know, schooling your school teacher. Like, can you share what that experience was like, right? Because you know we're boom back and we talk about this cross section of hip hop and education. When you brought your hip hop information to your private school education, what was that <laughs> like? Well, you know, I was always the kid that. Uh, on the surface, it appeared that, you know, I wasn't going to do anything, I wasn't paying attention. Mm-hmm. But every time they questioned me, I always had the answer. Mm-hmm. That was just me. In the religion class, you know, I grew up in a black household, so I went to church on Sunday. And I had to go to Catholic school. So mm-hmm. when this song came out, it, it reverberated a little bit for me because I was getting bombarded with that information so much. Mm-hmm. So... You have this this black man that looks like me, who feels like me, and just brought out something that I can use in real life. So I did it. And it (laughs) it was right like that. This is before I opened up a book or anything. I actually ended up getting in trouble with the teachers. I was disruptive because I was asking questions like that. Like, I didn't rap it. I I broke it down in conversation before (laughs) to see what was going on. But that right there, it, it, it made me like, first of all, it made me challenge for anything that was given to me, you know? Mm. Not in a way that is aggressive and or some fighting stuff, but you know, you take something that face value and you 
something that intrigues you and you interested in, go do your, your own information. Go do your own research. So that's what it instilled in me at an early age. All right, Coach Marcel. So you make a very well-rounded you make well-rounded kind of street conscious music you use the word conscious at one point you know uh and from your yeah. little references and people you know knowledge yourself how do you balance knowledge yourself knowledge of the streets and knowledge of others in a mix that uh, uh that works for you man that's a good question um uh, i mean because that's just being me you know like i grew up on the, I was my family from the west side of Rockton, you know, Venom Street, mm-hmm. okay. Alberta, Thurston area. That's where all my family is from. That's where I used to spend a lot of my time. That's the hood, you know. Indeed. Then I grew up on Parcel side. That's where my mom lived, you know, in okay. First Street. So I say that to say like the whole street that whatever like that's me. That ain't nothing. I, like I had no choice. I was fresh Prince of Bel Air. I went to McQuaid. They ended up kicking me out, but I was wearing air raids and cross colors at McQuaid. You know, straight snake. <laughs> they had to get ready. You know, that's the type of person I was. Uh, Cassie Smith, same thing. My mom got two masters. My father got uh, hit one master. Master's in accounting. My mother's a preacher. She has a master's in theology. Like, that's in my bloodline as well. So, I'm woke. I had no choice. You know, I might have been bad, but when I came home to report, I didn't, I didn't report to no flowers. Mm-hmm. So I had no choice. Wow, that's crazy. Um, I didn't know a lot of that. And what do, and what you said, too, in terms because you, you talked about the uh, the genealogy, right? You talked about, like, how it's, it's, it's been in you and with you for a while in terms of, like, you had no choice but to be woke. On that note, actually, I'm going to shout out the cameraman real quick. Because, yo, Rob, you know who the first person who told me who Phil Valentine was? This guy, coach, <laughs> coach. I didn't even know who this man was until we had a conversation like uh, what circa 2010, 2011. I, I was like, "Who's that?" That's how you know. So, but um, so yeah, shout out to to so Valentine. Indeed, still doing it. You know, um, yeah. you've been doing music. You know, hold on, not to yeah. cut you. We got a tie. I'm just gonna throw this out here. And people might not know this, but my daughter and your sister are like best friends or something. Yeah. <laughs> they, they grew up together. Yeah, yo. Um, we, we got a tie that <laughs> goes deep with the rap. That's a whole fact. Um, I discovered that when I was uh, working at, for the Y. And they, they were like, you know, yep. they were at NAS together for like years, right? And then they yep. stayed connected through dancing, right? Because she, she yep. dances, right? Yep. Yep, for sure. I saw her at the, the movie theater. She worked at Regal. I don't know if she does anymore, but I saw her at uh, Regal. And then, yo. Yeah, she's about to graduate from up for playing. Yep. Going to modeling school. She, she got a uh, scout. Shout out to my daughter. Yeah. Indeed, that's what's up. Our sister's doing big things. I, I didn't know she go to Aquinas too, because um, Ava go to Aquinas. Yeah. Uh, my sister go to Aquinas. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. And she about to graduate, so that's what's up, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. When when you when we're talking about uh, your roots here, you know what I'm saying. Um, you know you have a family, you know being raised here by your your, your parents, and you know uh, raising your daughter here, and 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 doing the music while you're here. Um, mm-hmm. You you maintain the longevity, right, of and consistency of doing music, right. So what does that look like? while still being current you know what i'm saying what does that longevity look like while you're still you know being current with how you move and what, what you do it's like a resume you know if you're not using your resume it means nothing so mm. everything that i did in the past is only relevant to what i'm doing right now you know and I'm, i moved to atlanta i'm in atlanta georgia right now not to become a monkey rapper and to try to mimic their sound, but this is where the tech writers is at. Mm. And I want to understand what's going on. Mm. So the next phase of my career is to take over the industry behind the scenes. I still have projects. I have an artist right now named Chuck Daly. Everybody going to be hearing soon. Another coach, of course. Indeed. A passionate choice like that. And, you know, that's really what it is. I can't, I'm not going to be the person to be bragging beforehand. But just like I reached out with this call, I'm reaching out for a reason. Some stuff coming down the pipeline is real stuff. I just want people to stay in tune with me and know it's right to whether I'm in Atlanta, if I'm in uh, Queens, 
Mm. I'm in Detroit. I'm in California. I'm from Rochester. And my whole, everything is Rochester. Everything I learned is from Rochester. Mm. Even though I lived in Flint, Michigan for about five years. I was in Flint, Michigan. Word. But this, this Rochester, yo, listen. You, I got a story, brother. Wait till <laughs> the movie come out. I just got to get these bags, man. <laughs> Indeed. Now, you're wise to be setting the table, man. Keeping people's appetite wet for your next move, you know? Yeah. That's, that's savvy, what it's all man. about, man. See, because... I had like I had no choice. Nobody was trying to get mm. with a dude that was trying to say, "Hey, yeah, I sell drugs, but it ain't right." Mm. Nobody knew what to do with that. <laughs> you know, they, they they ain't know what to do with that. So I had to do it myself. Shout out to Crying the Bomb. Crying the Bomb put me on. Word. It's another person in town. Don't really don't get it just do. Right, like right. I had the attitude. I was rapping, but as far as recording and putting together covers and just really getting into the, the back behind the scenes doing parties, he gave me my wings as far as that. That's what it is. So, yo, we could name off a, a whole gang of artists uh, from from the rock, you know, who took their talents elsewhere, if you will. Um, you know, Tweet, Green Lantern, Emilio Rojas, you know, Ito, Sonny. Um, they took the route of transplanting themselves to another city to pursue their goals. And you're, mm-hmm. you're OT right now, right? So tell us what it's like being an artist um, as a, a transplant from a different city. What is that experience like? Well, well, the first thing is, you know, people got to realize that Rochester is everywhere, whether it's mm-hmm. in the music industry in general. Most of the people, I'm here with two people from Rochester right now, mm-hmm. people that I grew up with. You know, so Sonny, I produced two tracks on his last mix. We got some projects in the in the in the, in the uh, works, but that's how you do it. You got to set up your pipeline. It's all about relationships. And if you wasn't cool with somebody at the crib, when you get outside the crib, it probably ain't gonna work. It's right. practice makes perfect. You know what I mean? So if you go in front for these people that you don't even know and break bread with them. Why wouldn't you break bread with somebody from the crib? Because the money's going to go back to the crib one way or another. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm about. That's what it is. That's what I'm about. Now, you have um, a new EP, right, with Spitzwell called Luke P. Right, yes, right? Yes, yes. So, so what role does this project have in your growth as an artist? Um. Well, first thing was I took two and a half years off like not even really looking at like being an artist or anything I have put 14 straight years in uh, like not missing anything I missed a lot of time on family life just mm-hmm. in general you know so when I stepped away and got back into it it was kind of a chance that's why Spitzwell produced the majority of that project because I have been tinkering around with production but it's been so long I didn't mm-hmm. know if my stuff was still hot or not you know, so Spitzwell came to me. I was actually staying with him. He came to me. He's like, yo, man, you ever seen Luke Cage? I said, nah. He said, yo, man, I got an idea. We should take the music from there and make a project. I think it'll be dope. I'm like, yo, I need to watch it <laughs> before I can't put my name on it. So, you know, we kicked around for about two months. I watched two episodes. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool, you know. He made the beat. And it just gave me a feeling of okay, I'm a. If we're gonna use the the comic book theme, I'm gonna be a comic book character. And if I was a comic book character mixed with Luke Cage, I'd be Luke Peake. <laughs> okay, so now you got the the kind. Now I got the name. So now let's set the the first episode of every comic. You know, you got to really bring in the people's story. They want to know your backstory. So if you listen to that album, it's like a book. As the first song is forward. It's just breaking down my life, you know, in, in my struggle. Just in the in the, the backdrop is eerie. It's like a, a movie, you know. And then as you go along, you just go to the different episodes, the different situations in my life, in comic book form, you know. And that's how that type of came from. I liked it. It was, it um it, it got me back. It got my juices flowing again, Paul. And I got another project that's leading up to my next project, Inner City Blues. You know. In the city blues. You can blues. tell by the name. All right. Yeah. Indeed. You can tell by the title what mm-hmm. it's going to be about. Mm-hmm. You know, I was on my 444 before home, yeah. but he had the butt. <laughs> you know, and I'm not no kid anymore. So the subject is going to be about just what I said earlier. Like, I grew up in the hood. I had to do certain things. 
because I had to do it. At, you know, that's just where I was at. And it ain't all pretty. It's really sad, you know? Mm. So that's a soundtrack for people that's in that life, letting them know, hey, you're not alone. You know, it's going to be all right. You can make it out. I'm with the truth. Mm. And it's really blue coming Indeed, and yo, the, the Luke P uh, project is super tough. Full disclosure, though, homie, <laughs> I, I and Rob Rob Lowe will tell you too that I um recorded a project. It was like a ten minute project, and when I released it, yeah. I saw the Luke P joint. And again, I think that's um, and the project I released was nothing but joints over Luke Cage beats, like the beats from yeah. the show. Right, so yeah. I called it the. Call I remember. It. Yeah, yeah. So I released it, and then I saw like, oh, Coach got it. So please know it was not an idea of like just oh, oh. Coach doing Luke P. Oh, now nah, I'm about to do this Luke. You, you definitely know see, that. This it was is where relationships that. come in. Indeed. This is where relationships and, and 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 see, I pound the pavement. You know, like if somebody who wouldn't know who you was might take it that way. Like I know. Yeah. What indeed. it is is we ain't alike. Indeed, that's it. Exactly. <laughs> we ain't like this. And what you got to realize is this is how how the world is funny like that. That album, that decision to drop it then was a spur of the moment thing. Mm. I had no intention to do it. The producer was like, yo, you got to drop it now because you got to drop this other project and we don't want them to back up on each other. Mm-hmm. So I dropped it and then as soon as I dropped it, I looked up. And here goes the pseudo guys with the same. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 that was I just wild, hope man. you didn't think it was on some stuff, but nah, nah. that's just you know, ain't hey, like brother. Yeah. That's all that is. Exactly. That's that's, that's what that I is. thought it was when I saw Lupe. I was like, that's just us being on the same wavelength. But I, I was yep. hoping that you right. didn't think that it was me oh, you know, no, on some man. on some copycat fugazi nah, nonsense. Because <laughs> uh, it certainly wasn't that. I watch your career, man. You was never born. You like, you know what I mean? If, if anything, it's because we're from the same vein. Yeah. Same That's Indeed. why that happened like that. That's a, it was just time. I, I, I definitely agree with that, you know. So, um, if we, I was in time, we would have did the show together and I'd have said it all. Yeah, that, all that, yeah, that would have been super tough. <laughs> that would have been super tough. But, yo, we're, we're going right. to, um, before we close out, man, we, we're going to. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. We're gonna um, have you do a little uh, activity, right? You know, we're Boom Bap, so it's this cross section of education and hip hop. And as you may remember from the SATs, they would have those little analogies like uh, heat is to Florida is what cold is to Alaska, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna have you do a couple of those, right? All right. Um, and and uh, about a variety of topics, right? Um, <clears throat> so. Spotify is to music is what blank is to television. What's what's the, what, what would you fill that blank in with? Netflix. Uh, Netflix. Okay. Yeah. Spotify is to music is what Netflix is to television. Okay. And there are no right answers here at Boom Bat, by the way. Everything <laughs> everything is about uh, uh, perspective. Trap music is to 2010 is what blank was to the 90s. Boom bap <laughs> All day uh, Okay MySpace Well hold Now let me ask you Why Why boom bap Instead of uh, Anything Because possibly Because see What people gotta realize Is boom bap Had its birth In the late 80s mm. It didn't really get Perfected To like the mid 90s And it was It was shining Like there was other stuff That went on in the 90s but nothing really mattered with that classic boom bap knock on the track like he you said had nothing to have else mattered alright kind of right. <laughs> that's, that's what it is man indeed yeah, alright so here, here's one that's gonna throw you for a little loop maybe <laughs> my space is to social media is what blank is to the music industry hmm that's couple, a good one. A couple different ways you could take that. Indeed. My space. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I caught the boy, but, you know, I, I had to think deeper. My space, social media, my space was the beginning of social media, mm-hmm. if you ask me, as far as that whole thing. Mm-hmm. So, and what's the second half again now? Uh, uh, my space is to social media is what blank is to the music industry. Um, Parties. Basement parties, right. black parties, you know. Uh, that's, a, that's, a sound that, that's, spread, that's the beginning of spreading, you know, the hip hop seed. 
you know? The, the hip-hop music wasn't meant that like it wasn't in them parties at that time and people being like, hey, this is all right. I'll be here next week. <laughs> if nobody came back, hip-hop wouldn't be here right now. All right, next one, Coach. Blank is to rap music like Stevie Wonder is to R&B. Hmm. That's a good one, too. Stevie, like, you know, like, that's, I don't know if nobody really made Stevie that. Is. <laughs> People talk about Dr. Dre, but I don't know if Stevie had Ghost Rider. You yeah, understand exactly. what I'm saying? No, yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like a, you know, he might have had a team writers at a certain time, but he that was I don't you know. I guess Dr. Dre at this point okay. would be the closest thing too, but I, I don't I wouldn't put him at Stevie's stat. Mm. He's his own great person though, but he the closest thing to him. <laughs> Indeed. Last one, we're gonna uh, hit you with two blanks, right? Police shootings mm-hmm. is to America is what blank is to blank. <laughs> Police shooting is to America as a gang shooting is to the hood. Mm. You want to uh, elaborate on that one? Well, when you talk about America and everybody, all they're talking about is police shootings right now, which is definitely what's going on, you know, be it right or wrong. When people talk about the hood, they talk about these shootings and whether they have to do with the gang or not, they're gang shooting. The hood got the gang stamp right now, just like America got the police shooting stamp. And then deeper than that, we're dying on both sides. We dying. That's a fact. True statement. Coach B, what we got to do, we got to put every uh, MC that comes on the show to the task of running down their top five MCs. The time has come for you to let us know yours. Break it down. Ooh, in, in a particular order, just in general. Uh, you can swing it how you want to, man. You can either go, you know, from the tippy well, top I'm on down or whatever. General, yeah. but I'm just gonna go in general. I'm just gonna go in general. That's why it's breaking their own way. These are the people that help take the most. Um, first and foremost, just because he was the one that really took me on the road, you know, and. and Put me on his wing for Sean Price. You know what I mean? Yeah. I grew up listening to Hosted Skelter, so when I got in the industry and he, like, I didn't beg for that and I didn't pay for that. People pay to go on tour. He asked me to come. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's the difference. You know, hmm. so that alone, rest in peace to my brother, Sean Price. Uh, then, you know, you gotta say, hold the knives. And, and I can only speak on what I know. Like some people on the old Melly Bell, like I don't, I didn't love listening to that, Indeed. you know? So I can't, I'm not going to diss it, but I ain't going to say it just because you say it. Just like I never watched Dr. J play. He's not in my top five. It right. is what it is. Right. So Indeed. day and night, you know, yeah. for various reasons, you know, mm-hmm. that's three, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so KRS One was my first. My favorite. He was, he was, you know, I don't like what happened later on in his career with mm-hmm. his personal stance, but that's neither here nor there. But he got me to where I needed to be, where I'm at right now. I can't take that away from him. And then, of course, rock him a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, you got that's a thorough what five. I grew up in. That is a very thorough five. <laughs> Can you imagine the five having an uh, album together or something? That's a dream team right there, boy. That's a crazy project. <laughs> well, right. coach, coach man we, we, we gotta sign off soon man can you let the people know where they can reach you at how they can reach you um, so that way they uh, can follow up after this interview uh, well you know various social medias uh, we linked up on FB build ourselves the coach that's the T-H-A the coach um, Instagram coach of coaches ES coach of coaches uh, Twitter at Coach Parcells, and that's all I really be doing is trying to social network. Oh, and then check out my uh, Bandcamp, Parcells. Go to Parcells on Bandcamp. I got albums there for free downloads. You want to get in tune to where I'm at, to where I'm at. Right. Well, Coach Homie, man, it's been nothing but a pleasure and a 
joy to have you up on uh, Boom Bap Radio. That's the um, truth. Thank you for having me, man. Last time. I, yeah, man, whenever, like, I got something you want to, like, the other thing is this, man, I can get political with y'all. I wanna, I'm on Atlanta, but I'm watching current events like that judge got slaughtered in public opinion and the cops fighting all the time. We ain't hear nothing about it. Mm. You know, I want to talk about stuff like that. And yeah, that's man. what I'm about. Word, and we, and we definitely know that. We definitely know that, man. So <laughs> we gotta have another episode where we, where we do that uh, for sure. Because again, oh. it's that it's that oh, blend yeah. of what you offer. That's that's uh, yeah, you know definitely. unique in itself. Um, for those that's who want to check us out, um, catch us from 1.30 to two o'clock on Tuesdays on Wayo. We have a Facebook group as well. Check us out online. Um, and we, we're gonna sign off. Everybody, peace and progress. We hope you have a great, 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 great week. Um, and be good. Peace, y'all. Peace, peace.